Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Paisley. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk about the, uh, the regeneration pathway uh, for Paisley Town Centre um, that we are embarking on, um, and a project that I consider myself very lucky uh, to be leading within the Council. Um, now, the Leader of the Council stole my thunder for, for the first few of my, um, my slides, but um, I'll, I'll whisk through these and we'll, we'll, we'll make up some time, which the, the organisers will be helpful, uh, thankful of, I'm sure. Paisley, I mean, if you know Paisley, if you were on the tour, etc., um, first thing this morning, um, you walk around the town and the legacy of the Industrial Revolution in Paisley is still here. It's still intact. Um, the mill, the, you know, phenomenal mill buildings that are, that are still there. Um, but probably more over and above that, um, the, uh, the astonishing philanthropic gestures that the, the owners of those mills um, uh, that gave to the town, um, admittedly driven by ego, admittedly demonstrations of uh, very conspicuous wealth, um, but they're there and they're absolutely, um, some of them were absolutely at the heart of building the community of, of Paisley. So we have the Coates Memorial Church, the largest Baptist uh, church in Western Europe. We have an astonishing museum and art gallery. Uh, we have a barmy fountain sitting in, the, in, in a garden to the north of the town centre, which has got walruses and cherubs and alligators and, and things, that, uh, really unusual things. Uh, we're in a building which was donated by the Clark family um, mill owners in the town. Uh, we, there is the Russell Institute, a building that was uh, donated to the town for the benefit of, of, of mothers and children. So all of that is there, all of that survives, um, and it is, uh, it's all present within a, a, a short walk around the town centre, which I'm sure a few, few of you will have experienced. So it has remarkable visible things. What is interesting, I think, about the town as well is that there are many remarkable things which are hidden away. Um, which are not told and are a little bit undersold. Um, so beyond these assets, these astonishing treasures can be under our feet. There is a medieval drainage system that runs around this quarter of the town. Um, it can be hidden in stores, it can be in back rooms, it can be in drawers. Um, we have volunteer-run museums of weaving. We have the studios of Alexander Stoddart, uh, who is the Queen's sculptor in ordinary in Scotland. Um, we have the medieval drain where some of the earliest written music was, was found during uh, archaeological investigations. Um, and we have huge collections held in storage and that was something that the, uh, uh, the leader of the council touched on. We also have a wealth of objects and of stories which are really important for the town. Um, Paisley's heritage collections are amongst the best in the whole of the country. Um, there are 350,000 objects in, in the Paisley Museum and, and its stores alone. And it, it's, it includes some of the best of the absolute best. Um, Glasgow Boy artwork, except they all came from Paisley. Um, Victorian scientific apparatus, um, including one of only three public observatories in Scotland. Um, and the legacy of some of the town's greatest sons um, are all here. And some of those stories are fantastic. So, for example, and there's a statue of this man just outside uh, the town hall, uh, a man called Alexander Wilson, who was a son of a weaver, um, a poor upbringing, but a poet, a man of words, and a man of natural history, who emigrated to um, America. Uh, and during his time there, um, developed and published uh, the Encyclopedia of the Bird Life of, of America, the first time it had been done. His idea was nicked by a rival publisher called Audubon. And Audubon, over, over um, several years, developed a product, and there's a, there's a photograph of a pink flamingo you might be able to make out on the slides, um, which was sold by subscription around um, uh, the very wealthy families of uh, the eastern seaboard of the USA and back into Europe. Um, the Coates family bought one of these books, um, huge books of artworks uh, for the town, put it in the museum. The last time one of those books went, went for sale at auction, it raised four and a half million pounds. So there's phenomenal depth, and that's just one story of many uh, that are represented within the town. And of course, it's people. And we're, this is a theme that I think I'm sure we'll be returning to time and time again during the course of the day. Um, 
but there are people within this town who've made an astonishing impact on an international scale. Um, and really, if I concentrate on the arts and cultural side of things, um, then bang up to date with people like Paolo Nettini and David Tennant, of course, um, Jerry Rafferty, who's, who has, uh, has left a phenomenal legacy to the town um, uh, in his music and, and uh, in an event that now ran, run, runs here every other year. But less well known, but still hugely impressive and probably more important from a regeneration perspective um, are a couple, of, a couple of other examples that I'll talk about. First of all, the man in the corner on the right-hand side is a chap called Dan Coughlin. He is uh, he's the, uh, the council's museum's curator of textiles. He's essentially the weaver in residence. He is the recognised authority on paisley weaving and the thread industries, and the guy who holds in his head the whole process of the design, the pattern making, how you set the looms up, and the whole, the whole weaving pr process beyond that. There's also, sorry, and, and his, um, his contact list, his inbox in, 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 uh, in, in his, on his computer, um, hosts a whole series of questions from all over the world. And so he is recognized globally um, as the authority. And then there's an interesting organization, um, Pace Youth Theatre. Um, many towns have youth theatres and organizations who do theatre and, and, and performance uh, for the young people of their community. We happen to have the largest youth theatre in the whole of United Kingdom in Paisley. And it deals with over a thousand young people every year uh, through its programmes. And it populates four, maybe going on five, um, old churches and church halls and community, community spaces within the town. Um, and needs more, constantly evolving and constantly growing. And of course, there's the icon of the town, the pattern the globally recognized uh, symbol of textiles and a particular style and fashion. Um, is it synonymous and eponymous with the town? Probably less than it was, but it is from this place. I say that, but it was actually nicked from India and it was brought to the UK by the East India Company, but it found its home here in, P in Paisley and it's been sold around the world. And I've got one here. This is not an original. <laughs> it was made in about 1984. But that is a Paisley shawl. Thank you to the museum for lending it to me today. Um, but as you can see, they are huge. That was only half of it. And that essentially is what the wealth of this town has been built on. And it does have a global reach. This international reach permeates today. This is actually taken from the modern day Coates PLC company, uh, their annual report, and it shows the operating regions and production facilities of the modern day company. But it does reflect the global significance of textile markets, and it reflects what we think is our potential of a corresponding audience uh, that reaches um, right, right to the four corners of the globe. And our thinking here is how do we bring the message about Paisley and this place into those towns and places and cities across the, the world, tell our story, and in doing so, how do we then sell a visitor office, offer for the town? So we have conducted um, a very strategic work over the course of the last year, engaged uh, interesting people to help us do that, uh, including Gerard, and we have what we feel is a platform for very serious um, economic regeneration. And it's based on that asset collection because it is of international significance. It gives us a platform to rebrand the town as an international heritage desti destination. And in doing so, gives us a sustainable platform for its economic regeneration. The ambition is to invest heavily in the heritage and cultural uh, side of re regeneration in the town for Paisley Museum to be one of the leading museums in Europe, to be the place absolutely synonymous with textiles, with textile design, and the heritage that that, is, that, that that has given us. And in doing all of that, to mobilize the town and build local capacity uh, to accommodate change, 
um, to accommodate tourists, uh, visitors um, and new industries in, in the creative side of things. Our vision then is absolutely around culture and heritage driven economic regeneration and we're setting our ambitions very high. And our town centre is at the heart of that approach because the concentration of the assets is here. Um, but we're absolutely focused on the fact that that has to permeate benefit right across the town, right across Renfrewshire, and ultimately benefit the whole of the communities um, that reside there. How are we doing this? It is about partnerships. Um, we are seeking to forge links um, both nationally and internationally to help us to do that. Um, it's about that heritage and that cultural regeneration that starts from the bottom up. Um, it's about development of Paisley as a visitor destination, developing those unique things that we have, the things that are authentic to the town um, that nobody else can lay claim to. Um, and it's about understanding where we've come from where we are and where we want to be, um, and starting to sweat out those connections at an international and local level. Now, we're being helped along the way with that, and we're, we are um, hugely encouraged by the fact that organisations like the OECD and the British Council um, are engaging with us in this um, because they see the value, they see the international learning. Um, but it is about that, well, that's fine. You've got an international, possibly an international interest there but our focus is absolutely and resolutely on the local benefits that can be accrued. So we have a range of physical projects. Um, we uh, are evolving a signature project around the museum and a major expansion of that so, so that it is that international museum of textiles, fashion and costume. Um, we're starting the, wonderfully, the wonderful process of a, a Green Book compliant uh, outline business case process. Um, but there'll be some exciting stuff along the way. We're going to run an international design competition um, uh, for that particular building in, in a year or so. Um, and we're looking at how that visitor product and that experience can, can permeate around the town. So if we, uh, think about go sorry, if we think about going on our holidays and going to one of these places in, across Europe or across the UK, um, you will know that um, every opportunity is, um, is provided uh, uh, for you to part with your money uh, on your way through that museum or to be honest on the way out of that museum or that attraction particularly if you've got young children in tow as I normally do these days um, so you, you pass through the cafe you pass through the shop now our thinking here actually is let's not do that cafe and that shop at the museum let's do that, that experience in our high street and let's make sure that when if visitors are entering the town that they're dropped off at a place which makes them walk up our high street to the museum and back again. And on that journey, what can we populate in the vacant buildings of the high street? Um, and that's where some of the secondary projects on the slide start to come in. That would perhaps be where um, our museum stores and education and research centre is. Our design and textile centre might well be. And by doing these sorts of things, we are quantifying and targeting the reuse of 10,000 square metres of vacant floor space on the high street um, and in such a way in which we will create jobs, training opportunities and learning opportunities for the community of Paisley. I really like this slide. I really love the image, but I really love the quote. The quote is taken from David Henshaw, who was involved in Liverpool's uh, European City of Culture in 2008. And the quote simply read, cultural programs are the rocket fuel of regeneration, I think is absolutely relevant for what we're trying to do in Paisley. We're planning a lot of physical regeneration. We need to take the cultural community of the town along with us. Now, this again is just a, a great story of the town. This is um, the Cork. It's an effigy of uh, one of the mill owners, the manufacturers, um, which is annually blown up on the green outside, um, and it's, it's a, an annual celebration of an industrial dispute where the, ve the weavers of the town um, sought payment um, for an essential but unseen thread that binds the shawls together, which they weren't paid for until they all went on strike. Stuck a 
firework up the guy's jacksie and, uh, <laughs> and won. So these stories permeate today um, and there are resonance, re resonance today in, in all of these things. What do we think are going to be the gains of all of this? And there are huge community gains to be had in terms of community delivery, participation, engagement and consultation, um, of bringing together the, the disparate parts of a, of a cultural and tourism and events programme uh, that exists, um, and really starting to mobilise and get organised around that. Our targets are to grow the visitor economy. Um, that's almost doubling it from where it is at the moment, but it brings with it hundreds of jobs. And we've done some work with that and benchmarking other places to quantify that. And then there's the learning, the training, and the education programmes linked to business development opportunities. Um, again, all focused on the high street. To, to return to what um, Jared was talking about in the last couple of slides of his presentation, there is this really important lesson um, about they are not going to do it. So the way we are going about our business here is to say that I will do it, as in all of us will do it, not them. Um, and we're learning those lessons from places like Derry. Um, and we're learning those lessons because we're seeking to deliver a, a heritage regeneration strategy which is of a place and by a place, and, and we engage the whole of the town in doing that. So, for example, when we launched our strategy in June, the invitations to that launch event didn't go out from the council, they didn't go out from the leader, they went out from the town. Paisley invites you to come and see. A catalyst for a lot of that, we feel, will be um, a bid for the UK City of Culture uh, for 2021. The bidding year is 2017 and we're, we're starting to, to mobilise that just now. And that's about engagement, um, and that's about bringing everybody in the town around that whole campaign um, to work together to deliver uh, something we think will be uh, really quite transformational. It is a bold statement of intent um, and a unifying opportunity for the whole town. So, as a Victorian Prime Minister once said, keep your eye on Paisley. Questions? Yeah, okay.